Since the release of Proxmox 9.1, we have a new option available for our containers. It's the Pull from OCI Registry option. This basically allows you to run Docker containers directly on Proxmox, in a similar way that you run your LXC containers. You no longer need to create another LXC or virtual machine, install Docker on it, then run a Docker image there. Now you can simply pull those Docker and OCI images directly from remote repository to Proxmox using this little button. The same way that you pull LXC templates. But maybe before we run those containers, let's talk about that OCI thing. Why can't they just say pull Docker image <laughs> here instead of pull from OCI registry, yes? Or other question, is this the OCI image different than the Docker image? And the answer is they are basically the same or compatible as the difference is more legal than it is technological, I would say. But to explain that, I think the best example would be with the Lego bricks. You know the Lego, everybody knows Lego, yes? It's a company that makes plastic bricks, we all know as LEGO. And this uh, locking mechanism for those bricks was patented by LEGO, so no other companies could make uh, bricks exactly the same type as LEGO did. But when the LEGO patent expired, other companies started making the blocks that look exactly the same. They look the same, they smell the same, you know, they are basically the same. However, for legal reasons, they can't call them LEGO blocks or LEGO bricks, because a LEGO is a company and a brand, and other companies cannot use this brand name. You are not allowed to use a Lego brand on your own product. And it's similar here. Docker was the inventor of Docker images. They invented the way how they are built. We still have Docker build tool, for example, yes? They also figured out how to run them, and uh, the problem really was that Docker is a private company. And many people didn't want to build any solutions having in mind that the technology is owned by a single private entity. And that's where the OCI came into play. Docker simply acknowledged that problem and released all the information about this technology so it could become the open standard. And it's no longer bound to a single private entity. So nowadays we can assume that Docker and OCI images are simply the same images. <laughs> I hope it explains a bit. We are talking about the same containerization uh, technology. <laughs> now the funny thing, the biggest OCI re registry will be the Docker Hub anyways. Because every time you pull a Docker image from docker.io, you basically pull it from Docker Hub. <laughs> That's what Docker Hub looks like. Uh, I believe you need an account to actually view the images. If we go to explore, you can see all the images that are available in Docker Hub. But this is not the only OCI registry you might uh, come across. Another big one is GitHub Container Registry, for example. If you go to ghcr.io, this is basically it. You can see this open source, repositories, and uh, if we go to trending, <laughs> you will see like uh, which ones are the most popular ones recently. You can change the language, blah, blah. And you probably already recognize some of them like traffic or IPTV, or N810 workflows, very popular recently, with N810 automations. And these are these OCI registries you can pull the Docker images from, or OCI images. There are many a bit less popular, like Quay.io, but you can also have your own registry. For example, in AWS, you've got something called Elastic Container Registry. You can create your own containers, <laughs> And you can push them up to that ECR registry, and then you can pull those images using this button from your own registry in AWS. Okay, but <laughs> so how do we pull that image? Let's say I want to pull something from Docker Hub. If we go to Docker Hub, we are already here, we can explore all the images available. Let's say we've got Alpine, yes? Alpine Linux, very well known. It says Docker official images. That's cool. Let's click on that and we already see some things. Like a basic command is docker pull Alpine. That's how we pull the image using the Docker itself. Which means I can simply go back to my Proxmox and <laughs> there are really three ways I can pull those images. I can simply try what's there. Pull Alpine, which means Alpine is the only thing I need here. But uh, the thing is, all right, let's run it, Alpine. I can query tags. Let me show you what it means. It will show me all available tags, which basically if we go back, we can see those tags here. You usually go for something like latest, but you don't have to. You might want to go for the edge one, or you can pull any other tag that you want. But, and the latest is usually at the bottom, you know, and you can simply download it. But what you can also do, you can scroll down and you can see some like branches, like additional information here, like, like this library Alpine is. If you put this, let's remove the tag maybe, 
library alpine as long as you can query the tags that means it works properly and i can see i can still query the tags and i can still choose the latest or edges or you can be even more specific and you can say docker.io library alpine that would be the full path to this repository to this docker image because what it really is this is the name of the remote registry it's docker hub basically this is so-called namespace and this is the name of our image. All right, I hope that makes sense. We can query the tags. We can take the latest one maybe. <laughs> Let's just pull it, yes? I say download and it takes like two seconds and we can already see that the Alpine latest has been downloaded. First thing you might notice, it's not compressed like LXC templates are usually compressed. You have like tar.gz which means they are gzipped. This one is not compressed because it's just 3 meg in size. And let me show you the first difference between LXC and Docker containers. If we want to run this con container, we do it exactly the same way as we do with LXCs. We create CT, I call it maybe, maybe ID 245, I say Alpine Docker, I need the password. And if we go further, template, is the Docker image that we just downloaded. I say next. And now the disk size, let me say 0.01. I say, Mark, what are you doing? This is 10 megabytes, basically, yes? 0.01 gigabyte? Yes, that should be enough to run Alpine Docker container. Let's go further. Core, <laughs> one is even too much. I could even limit it further, but never mind. Memory, 512 now. Let's give it 128 megabytes and no swap at all. Let's click next. We'll give it IP address and the gateway and that's it i say next next and finish again took took two seconds and we've got our container created it's here and if i start it we can see it's now up and running let's go to the console you can see application container detected console might not be fully functional all right, but let's press enter and we can see it is actually fu functional. First thing you might be interested in is the disk space, yes? Does it really fit into 10 megabytes disk volume? We run DFH and we can see that indeed Alpine Linux takes only 8 megabytes. All right, we occupy 88% of the disk space because I gave it just 10 megabytes, yes? But it's still enough to run IPA Alpine Linux Docker container. How it differs though from Alpine Linux LXC container, because if we go back, we can, if we go to templates, these are the normal templates for LXC containers. You can also see there is Alpine Linux LXC container, yes? I could run it as LXC. I will show you the difference. If we go back here, to our console and if we run ps aux command that's the biggest difference really docker container usually runs a single so-called entry point it's a main process with process id of one you can ignore the second one this is basically me running this command if i run it again it will increase the process id but uh, this is basically you running this pro this uh, command but the only process that is constantly running is this shell this is all this container runs really. And if you compare it to Linux container, the Alp, even the Alpine is, is very basic, it will run many more services. And we can see this entry point configured here. If we go to options, you can see the entry point is configured as bin shell. And what it means, <laughs> If I exit, if I just type exit, press enter, you will see what happens. It says detach terminating. And have a look, this container is now offline. Its status is stopped. Why? Because I stopped the only process that is running on this container. This is the only process and I've just stopped it. It wouldn't happen if it was LXC container, all right? But I can now go back and just start it. And it's, it will take like two seconds and it will be up and running again. It's not a problem. It's just something to bear in mind. This shell, which is this basically, yes, that's what we use right now. It's a shell. It's the only process running on container. And if we run, let's say, cut Etsy OS release, you indeed can see that this is Alpine Linux. And if we just go through some of the tabs here in resources, you can see our 128 meg, but you can also see we can add mount point and we can add device pass-through as if you had LXC container running here, which is very interesting option, I would say. 
and should simplify a lot how you run some, some services on your Proxmox. And then if we go to options, we talked about entry point, but uh, let's have a look at the environment. This is simply where you add your environment variables to your Docker container. You might want to add some variables. That's where you do that using these options environment. Currently only path is specified, but you can add additional ones if you want to. Okay, so let's maybe go here. I will say exit. It will shut down this container. Now let me remove it. And now if I want to pull something from different registry than, than Docker Hub, then I need that full path, okay? Let's say you want to pull something from that GitHub container registry, yes? Maybe Home Assistant. Bear in mind that you need the full path then, because Docker Hub is kind of assumed here as a default repository. But if you want to pull for, from G, GHCR, you need to put it here. GHCR.io, let's say Home Assistant, and it's a Home Assistant again. If we query the tags, we can see the tags, yes? And scroll down to see the tags available. But if I remove that GHCR and leave just this, and if I query the tags, you can see that without this registry host, it kind of assumes that it's hosted in Docker. And in fact, this image is not hosted there. It's hosted in GHCR.io, yeah? That's why we need full path. The other thing about those registries, if we go, even if we go to Docker Hub, let's say, if I go back, maybe let's search for, I don't know, Plex, you can see that each container can come from different uh, sources, yes? For example, Linux server is a very popular location for Plex, but you have many, many other ones where you can pull the Plex from. And the funny bit, oh, <laughs> it's like 17 pages, yes? The funny bit is that the official Plex image is not even here, because the official one from Plex INC is called, in fact, PMS Docker. And you can see that official Plex media server Docker repo, and you need this like 500 million pulls, and that's the one you want to pull if you want to have like a official Plex <laughs> image. And you can see all the information here, yes? You can see it runs on port 32400, and you can pull it using this command. So we can simply copy again here because we are we are back on Docker Hub. So I can use just this. Let's paste it. Let's query the tags. Go back to the bottom. I will pull the latest one because I want to show you something different. It says task OK. That's what you always want to see. Let's create the CT. I will also call it maybe 245 as the previous one. Let's call it Plex, password, go next, template. I need this one, PMS Docker, which is Plex, storage. Maybe this time we'll increase some a little bit. One core, maybe 1024. Next, IP. Next, next. It says detected o OCI archive and it's task OK, which means we can now start our container. It again says application container detected, console might not, fully, might not be fully functional. And on this occasion, if I press enter, in fact, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. And you might be thinking, hmm, what's going on here? So first thing, we still can access the Plex server because if I go to HTTP, not S, but HTTP only, yes, to 192.168.1.245, this is the IP of my Docker container, to port 32400 forward slash web, we can see, in fact, Plex is up and running. It says application is not hosted by Plex, of course, because I host it on my Docker container with this IP address. But uh, so how do you get to that, uh, you know, how do you get console output? What you have to do, you have to go back to PVE and you say PCT enter and then the container ID, which is 245. And you can see you are logged on to your Plex. But why this way? Why I can't access it as I did with the Alpine? That's because this Docker container is different. If we run PS Oaks, you can see many services running in one container. And in fact, if we go to that Plex, if we go to that options, 
that we explored for Alpine, we can see now the entry point, point is different. It's called forward slash init. And init behaves like a system container, which means it behaves like an LXC container. It's not a single service, it's multiple services. And you won't kill it by simply exiting one of the services. And another thing, if we go back, I mean, sorry, <laughs> I have to run PCT enter again. If I say cut Etsy OS release, we can see that Plex is basically running on Ubuntu 2404. If you can see, because if you go here and in options, you have the init as an entry point, that basically means it's a system container, equivalent of LXC container. So <laughs> I know it's confusing. So you can see like the differences between those LXC containers and Docker containers sometimes might become a very blurry. But uh, for me, the most important bit is that it works surprisingly well, this technology, at this very early stage. Remember that it's still technology preview, so it's not even beta. This is simply the stage where Proxmox wants to figure out if it's worth pursuing to develop it further. And I think it is. Of course, for me personally, like support of YAML files where I can create multiple containers by running just a single template file would be a nice addition. But the fact that this thing already works and it's so easy to use, it's really, really refreshing, I would say. And uh, by the way, the environment, if you click that, you can see you have many more environment variables here, but you can still add as many more as you want, yes. And also remember that if you want to learn more about Proxmox, about Linux, Docker containers, or stuff like AI agents or NA10 automations, then please visit Automation Avenue platform where you will find loads and loads of very interesting and useful materials. That's it for today. Hope that was helpful. So thank you for watching.